Trilogy of the Theta and I am back with more Batman Arkham Asylum. Today is going to be a little bit different because I did say I would do this before I do the Poison Ivory. I have to meet up with Poison Ivy yet again. That being is that I'm going to be doing an intermission chapter. Um, oh my god. Look at all of that. Fiddle, diddle, diddle, answer my riddle. Ready? Come on, bruh. Um. Okay, so those are my Wayne Tech upgrades. So, it looks like the only thing, really, that I have to do is, uh. Nope, nope. You know, is basically visiting the character bios. Um. Which I will be doing today. I think I will be starting off, um, and also along the way, I will also be visiting the tapes. Um, so it looks like I'll be starting, um, from the spirit of Arkham and then ending at Batman. So, yep. <clears throat> so what I am doing for this, uh, for this episode is that I'll be visiting the character bios and and of course playing the interview tapes for whichever characters actually have their interview tapes. Other than that, it's just going through their stuff. <coughs> and yeah. So I'm going to start off with the Spirit of Arkham who has multiple tapes. Uh, okay. So the story. Strange writings and symbols have been found around Arkham Island and deciphered by Batman. These must have left for a re these must have been left for a reason. What story do they tell? Um oh, wrong button. Whoops, okay. Real name is unknown occupation is unknown base of operations in Arkham Island. There is you know, there's no telling who the heck this guy looks like at all. But his first appearance was in Batman Arkham Asylum, Summer 2009. Yep. And, uh, yeah, can you believe it? This game's, uh, over ten years old. Christ. <laughs> okay, no sort of attributes, because like I said, this guy is a mystery. Okay, so now we have a total of seven messages that we will listen to. And I know we will listen to them like even throughout the gameplay, but but since this is the intermission chapter, I figured it's appropriate to, you know, kind of re to kind of revisit them and kind of refresh in that before we get all of that stuff. And after this, if there's any new character bios that get unlocked for whatever reason, mostly because of riddle, riddle riddy things, riddler throwing his crap around I will be visiting them, you know, that sort of stuff, reading that, and whatever else. And that stuff. Okay. Let's hear the first deciphered message. Here we go. I am the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. Through my actions, I have saved this cursed city, where my own curse is to forever remain in the shadows. My story is carved into the very soul of Arkham, and will only be revealed to those dedicated enough to discover it. Ooh. Did y'all hear that? Like, bruh. Yep, it's getting wild here. Oh, and by the way, I will also, um... Uh, I was just taking a picture of these things on my phone, so I will, you know, so that you get a clearer picture of them, and I'm sorry I couldn't get that in the first place, this camera does not allow that. Cameras sometimes can have very questionable lighting. So along with that, so along with these readings, you will be hearing a lot of, you know, you know, listen to the messages or interview tapes, whatever tapes, and, um, and, you know, just 
to hear everything about them. I will also, you know, have in pictures of their stuff so that you get a clear picture of what these guys look like. Because, like I said, the camera does not do that for reasons unknown. The camera has very weird lighting and... Yeah. <laughs> but... But I will, but I've already have an alternative by, you know, just snapping pictures of them through my phone, and then they'll be thrown in the video as well. So be on the lookout for that. Second message. My family's blood ran through the heart of Gotham. We were doctors, politicians, and teachers. We have been the organs cleaning the arterial filth from the city. We have been its servants, giving all to protect it. And still it has chosen to hurt us. Oh, no! As Gotham's veins slowly filled with pain and suffering, the effects were felt everywhere. My father fell first, infected by some foul disease. My mother lived on, but only in a dream. I returned to the family home to care for her, where she remained in her bed for as long as her body continued to breathe. Her tears kept me awake at night. But yeah, interpreting from that sound like, yeah, she was in pain. <laughs> My journey lasted little over a month. Visiting academics in both Metropolis and Keystone, I was exposed to a wealth of new ideas. I began my day returning home in good spirits, eager to see my wife and family. I ended it kneeling in their blood, broken fragments of my life, pouring through dripping red fingers. Uh, what? Bam! I did <laughs> Yo, no, Chief! Oh, no! I returned to my work, but I could not shake the pictures from my mind. I should have been repulsed, but I was more eager than ever to find an explanation for why someone would do this. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um... Next up. They brought the animal before me, shameless and barking like a mad dog. For what felt like days, I endured his boasts. He took pleasure recounting his actions, cataloging his depraved crimes. What should have been revenge turned to pity. This poor dog needed my help. Oh my god, dude, you were really about to turn away a dog? <laughs> oh my god, Armadeus Arkham, you're kind of a dick. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I have to break it here, Armadeus Arkham, but you're kind of a dick. <laughs> yeah. Final message. The island changed little over the years. Its reputation was in tatters, but I vowed to fix it. As the buildings were rebuilt, I saw the future. A bright, wonderful future. <laughs> what? Bro, no! Oh, no! This guy is up to no good. Okay, next up we have Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on a what? <laughs> and then he started to be what the... What the heck is he doing? Yep. Okay. Alrighty, so his story. An obese, bald man nicknamed Humpty Dumpty for his egg-like form. Hum uh, Humphrey Dumpler is obsessed with taking things apart and putting them back together. His crimes at first were minor break-ins leading to small mechanical items no longer functioning due to Dumpler's inability to, edit, to adequ uh, adequately 
reassemble them after taking them apart. But soon his obsession grew to the point that major disasters occurred in Gotham. Dumpler's crimes also extended to a gruesome attempt to fix his abusive grandmother by dismembering her and then attempting a Frankenstein-like reassembly. Oh, that's morbid, bruh. At Arkham, he is a model inmate. His quiet nature and imposing physique inuring him to the madness surrounding him. Okay, so his name is Humphrey Dumpler. Is a professional criminal based in Gotham City. He has brown eyes, no hair, six foot three, weighs three hundred and fifty, three hundred and forty-five pounds. Fam, he hella obese. Like, <laughs> I hope he don't eat himself to become on my six hundred pound life. And first appearance in Arkham Asylum: Living Hell, issue one in July two thousand three. And his attributes: extremely tall, heavy, and strong. Possesses an almost unnaturally quiet, deliberate nature. Ritualized childhood abuse has led to a severe case of arrested development and an inability to assimilate into modern society and obsessed with the, pro with the processes of disassembly and reassembly. And that's all for him. And that, yeah, that is all for him. Okay, moving on from Humpty Dumpty is Clayface. <laughs> okay. And, um, I don't know if you probably remember him from my Lego Batman Let's Play. Um, that being both the console and the DS version. Okay. There we go. Initially an, an actor in horror films, dang, Carlo Basil, uh, Basil, Carlo went mad when he learned a classic film of his was to be remade with a different actor in the lead role. He took on the mask of the film's villain, Clayface, and killed several of the remake's cast and crew before, before being stopped by Batman and Robin. Later, Carlo joined the Mutt Pack, an alliance of shape-changing uh, shape mutated villains who have subsequently used the name Clayface. While the group was defeated, Carlo tricked his allies and injected himself with the essences of several of them, becoming a superhuman imbued with the, with the ability to change shape, melt others into protoplasm with a touch, and mimic the powers of heroes or villains he copies. Basically, yeah, he could change it any shape he wants. You guys remember that earlier? In the, uh, Penitentiary? Um... You know, right, you know, when you were about to rescue, um, you were about to rescue, uh, Quincy Sharp. Okay, his real name is, is Basil Carlo. He's a professional criminal based in operations in Gotham City. He has red eyes, no hair. He is six foot five and weighs 265 pounds. First appearance in Detective Comics, issue four, excuse, I mean, excuse me, issue 40. That's June 1940. And his attributes can alter his physical form, adopting the appearance of nearly anyone. His malleable physical form makes him extremely difficult to endure or contain, and his touch can be poisonous. <coughs> <coughs> yep. Okay, and now we have the Mad Hatter. young age with Lewis Carlo's book, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Jarvis Tetch, an, ex an expert hypnotist, um, embraced a delusion that he was the incarnation of a character in the story, The Mad Hatter. We, uh, which is pretty much, you know, The Mad Hatter is exactly what it says. Using his skills for, uh, for mesmerism, the Mad Hatter has committed many crimes often themed around the book that inspired him and his love of hats and headgear going so far as to implant his hats with the mind control of chips to amplify his hypnosis skills. Above all other headwear, however, he covets Batman's distinctive cowl and will stop at nothing to require it. 
His real name is Jervis Tetch. He is a professional criminal in Gotham City. has blue eyes, red hair, 4 foot 11, and weighs 115 pounds. First appearance in Batman issue 49 in November 1948. Ooh. And his attributes of master of hypnotism and mind control, obsessed with hats, especially one-of-a-kind items, delusional, schizophrenic, with a fixation on Alice in Wonderland. Mmm. Yo, this guy's hella messed up. Scarface! We got Scarface! <laughs> Okay, and by the way, I actually never really took notice of this last set, but uh, yeah, Scarface was the one who, he seemed to have taken Warden Sharp's place, you know, when he's talking on the TV, because he was, because you hear him talking in the background, and that stuff, so, just wanted to point that out there. Okay, Gotham's Black Ape Penitentiary once had a gallows tree, um... From which, there, from which 313 criminals with death sentences were hanged. The wood from that tree was wilted by an inmate into the puppet Scarface, and that inmate was murdered by Arnold Whisker, a man who soon fell under Scarface's influence. While most believe that Scarface is simply a tool through which Wesker, as the criminal mastermind, the, uh, the ventriloquist, acts out, a, a, acts out a dark side to his personality, Wesker himself believes that Scarface is possessed by the souls who died beneath the gallows tree, and the puppet actually motivates him to commit the duo's many crimes. Oof. Real name is Scarface, a professional criminal in Gotham City. He has black eyes, black hair, two foot six, since he's basically a puppet, almost, and um, weighs 15 pounds and and uh, was first uh, first appeared in Detective Comics, issue 583, in February 1988. And his attributes: puppet animated with eerie, <laughs> eerie very mistilitude. I hope I'm saying that right. Probably not. By the ventriloquist, frequently wields mo under uh, undersized but lethal weaponry. And when teamed with the ventriloquist, acts as an old-style mob boss with a sociopathic disregard for human life. Oh. Okay, now we have Scarecrow. He is the first patient we are visiting, who we, who we hear an interview tape from. Yay! Which we will do soon. Okay. Taunted and bullied as a youth, Jonathan Crane vowed to overcome his fears through the study of, bi of psychology and biochemistry. Kicked out, of kicked out of his university for experimenting on human subjects, Crane then adopted the identity of the Scarecrow and armed, him, and armed himself with a specialized fear-inducing gas that makes a person that makes a, a person's deepest phobias become frighteningly real. Jesus Christ! His ongoing criminal reign of terror makes him one of Batman's most psychologically dangerous foes. <clears throat> no joke. This guy ain't playing around. Okay. His real name is Jonathan Crane, is a professional criminal in Gotham City, has blue eyes, brown hair, he is six feet, Christ he's tall, weighs 140 pounds, then he was abused, then again, as you probably saw him and that stuff, you're thinking, bruh, how in the world, like you are scrawny as heck, yet you got six pack abs, what up with that, I need an explanation, fam. And then his first appearance is in World's Finest Comics, issue 30, in fall 1941. This guy ain't playing around. Master of Psychology and Chemistry, creator of fear-inducing gas, and motivated... Ugh, excuse me, I can't talk today. Motivated by an obsessive need to create fear in others. 
So yeah, he's a guy who's obsessed with fears. No joke. Let's play the tape. Somewhere that the doctor, Dr. Murphy and Dr. Combs, that were references, and they were in a way kind of references to, uh, you know, the guys who played Scarecrow and other works, um, Jeffrey Combs in the animated series, um, and then Cillian Murphy in Batman Begins, the Dark Knight trilogy, <clears throat> aka the guy who everybody who a lot of people can say is too handsome, is too freaking handsome to be a guy. Like, like they say, he is the prettiest guy. <laughs> How? <laughs> Yo, I'm there. <laughs> okay, and now we throw with him. So now we got Mr. Freeze. Okay, Victor Freeze, I used to pronounce it Victor Fries, which, I don't know why. Actually, I thought, <clears throat> I actually thought that, you know, his last name was pronounced as Fries. Because you would say French Fries, but that, that is clearly not the case. Okay, Victor Fry, Victor Freeze, excuse me, was a brilliant cryogenist. Um, whose beloved wife Nora was stricken with a fatal degenerate, degener, uh, excuse me, degenerative disease. He placed her in a suspended animation while obsessively searching for a way to cure her. But the corporation that funded his research and Nora's life pulled the plug, triggering an accident that transformed from Freeze's body into a cold-blooded form that must always be kept below zero. At normal room temperatures, he will die. Wielding a number of freezing weapons, he wears protective armor in his quest to somehow bring back his lovely wife and avenge her fate, which he partially holds the Batman responsible for. Okay, his real name is, doc is Dr. Victor Freeze. He's a professional criminal in Gotham City. He has blue eyes, no hair, six feet tall, 190 pounds, and first appearance in Batman issue 121 in February of 1959. And his attributes, a scientific genius with a speciality in cryogenics, employs an extensive array of cryoweaponry. His body has been permanently altered to survive a sub-freezing state and wears protective freezing armor whenever he's out in an above zero climate. And motivated by his grief and anger towards the fate of his wife, Nora. Yeah, like this guy, like, I mean, he dearly loves his wife. He is one of the few who, yeah, you know, if so, you know, I think I heard, like, in the in an episode of Har of the Harley Quinn show, or the show Harley Quinn, whatever it is, that he basically, like, talked to her about, you know, you know, about having a healthy relationship, you know, kind of about what love really is, and a healthy relationship and that. And I thought that was really interesting, this, you know... Yep. Okay, so now we got Poison Ivy. Okay. Okay, botanist Pamela Isley was transformed by a science experiment gone wrong in a plant human, uh, into a plant human hybrid with chlorophyll flowing through her veins instead of blood. Ooh, yeah, she really went through quite a transformation. Um, 
she developed a toxic touch and a ferrum fueled talent for seduction. Her crimes have become more ecologically focused as she has increasingly abandoned her human side. Identifying more with the natural world, her unique brand of eco-terrorism often puts her in conflict with Batman, which I'm, whose iron will usually protect him from her seductive powers. So, yeah, she's basically eco-terrorist. <laughs> although, although she played, you know, she deep, she played... She doesn't play out anything outside of, you know, being a villain. She was not a villain, pretty much, in Ark of Night. And, yeah. Okay, her real name is Pamela Lillian Isley. Uh, is a professional criminal based of operations in Gotham City. He has, she has green eyes, red hair, uh, 6 foot 8, and uh, weighs 115 pounds. And first appearance in Batman issue 181 in, in June 1961, 1966. And her attributes are an, an ability to encourage and direct the growth of all plant life. Ew. Plant genes mixed in with her DNA makes her an unpredictable and formidable physical opponent, exudes natural ferums that enable her to exert control over victims, skin secretes a toxin that can make her touch deadly. Pathological drive to rid the world of humanity and make it safe for plant life. And now we got the patient interviews, which we got every single interview tape for. So we're going to play them all. Patient interview. Pamela Lillian Isley, November 12, 11.33 a.m. Good morning, Pamela. How are you today? Fine. Today is a special day. What do you mean? This is the anniversary of my new life. When I found my true self, my destiny. Are you referring to the event with Dr. Woodruff? Yes. What else? Of course, at the time, I thought Jason had poisoned me. But in retrospect, he did me a huge favor. And why do you believe what he did has helped you? He showed me the bigger world. A world I should protect. Of course, my first offer was rejected. Offer? You tried to kill everyone in Gotham. Well, sometimes you need to prove that card in order to make something flourish. Wow! Yo! All right, second tape. Here we go. Patient interview. Pamela Lillian Isley, November 14th, 10:21 a.m. Hello, Pamela. Today I'd like to go back to something you said in our last conversation. Ask me anything you like. You said your first offer to help Gotham was rejected. How can you possibly believe that? Well, what do you mean? You released thousands of poisonous spores into Gotham, killed hundreds of people. How does that help anybody? I'm not interested in bodies, Doctor. Horrible, fleshy trash walking around destroying my poor babies with their greed and arrogance. But aren't you one of those fleshy facts? You're a... were a doctor, too. How can you turn on your back on us? Quite easily, if it happens. But not to you, Stephen. You're different. I feel we have a connection. Really? You do? Of course. Whoa! So she got... Like I said, the art... I, as I said before, the Arkham staffing and the way they, they arrange the uh, the doctors with patients can be questionable. And we're going to see later on another example of this very thing happening. Because in this case, with Dr. Kellerman, who's clearly a man... Um, who probably appears to be an older man, um, and, you know, he's basically assigned to poison ivy. Really? Third tape. Pamela, I got you what you asked for. Do you like it? Oh, yes, Stephen, I love it. Such a beautiful flower. Do you mind if I take it? Oh, no, Pamela, I can't leave it. It's against all the rules. I'll just bring it and show it to you when I visit. But it's me, Stephen. I get so lonely on my own. You wouldn't want me to be lonely, would you? No, of course not. You keep it. Just don't let anyone see. Really, no one. You can trust me, Stephen. 
Yo, are you really? <laughs> Yo, I'm dead. Wow. <laughs> oh boy. Now we got to the now we get to the final tape. Now we're done with her. So now we get to Mr. Saz, uh, who is also another example to where, you know, the whole, you know, where the, uh, the Arkham Asylum staffing with patients got really questionable. Because at the time, you know, Zaz was killing young women and um, he got assigned a, a female doctor who was also considerably young. And then later on, yeah, he does end up still assigned to uh, Dr. Whistler. It was an older woman, but still. Why? He is 10 out of 10 a serial killer. Okay. A true sociopath, Zas grew up in a life of ease, but nonetheless became a serial killer. Indiscriminate in his prey, body count is the only thing that matters to Zas. He takes pleasure in arranging the corpses of, uh, corpses of his victims in lifelike poses before carving a mark for each of his victims on his own body. He is saving a special spot for the Batman. Uh oh. Okay, real name is Victor Sass. He is a professional criminal in Gotham City. He has blue eyes, blonde hair. Um, although he looks like he ain't got no hair. Yeah, he, he, I don't know. For some reason, he looks like he ain't got no hair. Although he definitely got the blonde hair in Birds of Prey. There you go. He is five foot eight, 150 pounds, and first appearance is in Batman Shadow of the Bat, issue 1 in June 1992. And his attributes a sociopath with no regard for human life, no pattern of killings, making it difficult to track, and compulsive need to kill others. Okay, and now we also have another. This is another character who we have all of his interview tapes. So, let's play them all. You too.
Yo, no! Oh, no! Yo, no! He did not suck her! No! Yeah, that was, that just ain't it, Chief. I'm sorry. He broke out and then basically stalked Dr. Cassidy and yeah, got her. And now, yep. All sort of bad. Okay, and next we have Aaron Cash. One of the senior and respected guards at Ar on Arkham, Cash has been the only one unafraid of one inmate, Killer Croc, who was severely wounded Cash once during a ride at the asylum. Cash remains determined, however, to keep the asylum's inmates under control and to conquer his fears of Croc. Okay, real name is Aaron Cash, Arkham Asylum guard. In Gotham City, has brown eyes, black hair, 6 foot, 185 pounds, and first appearance in Arkham Asylum, Living Hell, Issue 1, on, on July uh, 2003. And his attributes, a great physical strength, and excellent reflexes, one of the most experienced guards at Arkham, and lasting in enmity with Killer Croc. Alrighty. We have Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne, who are, who are Noach's, uh, Bruce's parents. Alrighty. Okay, Thomas Wayne was a gifted surgeon and heir to the Wayne fortune. Dedicated to philanthropy <laughs> as well as medicine, he and his wife, Martha, were well-known and respected in Gotham. Martha Wayne shared her husband, Thomas's charitable nature, and was dedicated to her son, Bruce's upbringing. 
She was well regarded in Gotham City's social circles and helped host lavish charity balls at Wayne Manor. His family's rich. <laughs> Their tragic murder at the hands of a desperate burglar, Joe Chill, in Gotham's, in Gotham's Crime Alley, shook the city to its core and led to years of urban blight. It also inspired their son, Bruce, to eventually become the Batman. Okay, so here's their real names. Uh, Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne. Thomas is a doc uh, and then there's Dr. Philotropus, um, both in Gotham City. Uh... Blue, brown eyes, black, brown hair, six foot one, five foot eight, 180 pounds, and 135 pounds, and their first appearances in Detective Comics, issue 33, November 1939. Okay. And their attributes. Highly gifted and well-trained surgeon, heir to the Wayne family fortune, dedicated to philanthropist, mother to Bruce Wayne, wife to Thomas Wayne. Yep. Okay, so now we have Oracle. Okay, the daughter of Gotham City's police uh, police commissioner, James W. Gordon, Barbara Gordon, was forbidden by her overprotective father from joining the GCPD. For, from the GCPD, yeah. Um, instead, she took down the identity of Batgirl and was a crime fighter, a crime fighting partner of Batman for years, but that all ended when the Joker shot her through the, uh, through the spine. Paralyzed from the waist down and confined to a wheelchair, Barbara adopted the new identity of Oracle and now aids the Dark Knight with her computer expertise, providing Batman with the, with the constant stream of information in the field to aid his battle against crime. Ooh. And her facts, uh, she is Barbara Gordon. Occup uh, occupa um, occupation is an information broker based in Gotham City. Has blue eyes, red hair, 5'11", 126 pounds. And first appearance and Detective Comics, issue 3, issue 359 in January 1967. And she is tall. Golly. Golly, girl, she is tall, fam. Okay, Aida memory, total, uh, almost total recall of everything she sees and reads. Extensive headquarters in Gotham City's clock tower filled with, with information archives. And high-level hacking and computer skills. Oh, boy. And next up, we have Commissioner Gordon. Okay, Police Commissioner James W. Gordon dedicated his career to cleaning up the corruption of Gotham City Police Department. And uh, a goal he has come a lot he has come a long way towards accomplishing. He has been equally tough on crime and in the pursuit of making Gotham City safe for all of its citizens. Gordon has forged an uneasy alliance with Gotham's other top crime fighter, the mysterious vigilante known as Batman. His real name is, is James W. Gordon, a police commissioner in Gotham City. His blue eyes, white hair that was formerly brown, is six feet tall and, and weighs 180 pounds and first appearance in Detective Comics issue 27 in May 1939. Okay, and his attributes, uh, an experienced police officer, Trained and trained criminologist and proficient in hand-to-hand -hand fighting techniques, an expert marksman. No oh boy. And Dr. Penelope Young, aka the woman who should, who should, aid and because Dr. Young decided to do so many unethical crap that I personally want to tell her, you are about to lose your job. Oh, um, I. <laughs> I accidentally, I accidentally dropped my controller and that happened. Okay, but you were about to lose your job. 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 Because, yeah, she did so much unethical crap, including draining Bane 
literally, like, she drained him of his venom, you know, in a very uncool, unethical move. Yeah, was creating a cure for the, uh, for the Joker, and she was trying to exper uh, to experiment this stuff on the Arkham patients, but she took a very unethical approach to getting it all done. And had she not died earlier in the game, had she not died earlier in the game, I bet you, and had the, had the Black Ape prison not been on fire, I bet you, too, I, I'm putting all my money that she would probably have her butt sent to Blackgate. Because what she did was practically a criminal act. Like, I'm sorry, like, what she did was just, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, I mean, of course, most of the Arkham staff is very incompetent as it is. But, Dr. But Dr. Young is probably the worst offender. She is not good, okay. Young was always a brilliant student who was prepared to do anything to advance professionally. She has built up a reputation for being a cold, calculating woman focused only on the project at hand. She was hired at Arkham Asylum by Warden Quincy Sharp to, to uh, head up the asylum's research department and to finally restore to sanity the more deranged of Gotham City's supervillains. Okay, real name doctor is uh, Penelope Young, is head of research at base. And Arkham Asylum has blue eyes, brunette hair, brown hair, six foot, uh, five foot six, 121 pounds, and first appearance is Batman Arkham Asylum, sum summer 2009. And her attributes graduated from Gotham University with top honors, dedicated to the pursuit of psychiatric cure for various forms of criminal insanity, highly focused on career ambitions, and intolerant of people who get in the way of her work. But, yeah, part of the stuff, look where it got her. And here is the Riddler, Riddy! <laughs> Yay, we got Riddy! Okay, with an obsessive uh, compulsive need for attention, Edward Nigma is determined to be the most outlandish of Gotham City criminals. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Concoct uh, con uh, concoctating, I'm sorry, but can't pronounce that. Elaborate series of clues and riddles around his crimes. Batman has proven a worthy opponent capable of deducing the Riddler's plans, but Nigma is, de is dedicated to creating a mystery that the Dark Knight will not be able to solve in time. And his facts: He is Eddie Nashton, aka Edward Nigma. Occupate, uh, he is a professional criminal in Gotham City, has blue eyes, brown hair, 6'1", 183 pounds, and first appearance in Detective Comics, issue 140, in October 1948. And yeah, he is the only character in this game that, you know, does not make a single physical appearance, but he does have a, but he does have a good series of interview tapes, so... We gotta listen to them shortly. Okay, his attributes is a genius intellect driven by a need to test his wits against law enforcement by leaving clues in his planned crimes, compulsive need for attention. Yeah, he's just one, he wants attention. Okay, so we have, so we have two of the five tapes, but we will listen to them anyway, because why? All right, let's get to one. Good try. But the answer to all three is a baby. 
Okay, the jokes, the, the, the very morbid jokes upon babies. <laughs> I'm starting to think the Joker is rubbing off on him. But, <laughs> I'm sorry, that Riddy, no, I'm sorry, honey, but no, 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 honey. We ain't doing that today, Riddy. God, my God, this guy just, just yo, just, no. <laughs> like, yo, and then he gets up at me with, um, trying to say, would try to say, yo, you're cheating. And I'll be like, uh-uh, why you always lying? Why you always lying? Oh my god, stop breaking lying. Okay, next tape. He basically cheated to, yeah, he basically cheated to solve a, you know, a logic, a logic problem for school, and won. <laughs> wow, Riddy. Okay, next up we have Catwoman. Yay! This is actually easily one of my favorite DC characters of all time. Okay. learned to survive on Gotham City streets, Selena Kyle took, uh, took to thievery to survive, but determined to do it in style. She learned martial arts and trained extensively to perfect her skills at Cat Burglary. Her criminal activities are often tempered by a reluctant altruism, making her an inconstant constant villain and occasional hero. She regularly eludes capture by the Dark Knight and maintains a complicated adversarial relationship between Batman uh, a relationship with Batman that frequently turns flirtatious and and occasionally legitimately romantic. Okay, if there's anyone out there who who uh, if there's anyone out there who should be you know who should be shipped with Batman, Catwoman is that woman. You know these two, yeah, sure they might be complicated and that, but at least they have a healthy relationship. Talia does not deserve him. In fact, like I said earlier on, I said, you know, that I think that Talia sounds like she's no good. Um, and plus, I think Talia would kind of low-key be, in a way, manipulative to, uh, yeah, she would kind of be manipulative to, um, to Batman. It would, lo it would be very unhealthy, a very unhealthy relationship. And given everything that he's been through and who he's lost... I don't think he deserves that unhealthy relationship. That's why Catwoman is right there. Okay, so her name is Selena Kyle, a professional thief in Gotham City. Is, uh, she has green eyes, black hair, five foot seven, 125 pounds, and first appearance in Batman issue number one in spring 1940. And her attributes: trained gymnast and athlete, expert hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Highly skilled with her specialized whip, a cat, a cat of nine tails, capable of astonishing stealth, obsessed with and adept of stealing famous and well-protective items, and drawn to cat motifs. <laughs> wow, Catwoman. Okay, now we got Bane. I don't know why, but the bear clue that we found earlier on. Because there was that clue that says, you know, the bear is the bane of his existence or something like that. And the bear was the clue. I thought that was really... That was probably one of the weirdest clues 
thrown out by the Riddler. Just why? <laughs> Okay, imprisoned from birth to serve his dead father's sentence, Bane was raised inside the horrific er uh, environs of a Santa Prisca prison. His only friend in the hellhole was a teddy bear he named Os Os Osito. Yeah, or Oso. <laughs> that era Oh, so that's why. That's why the bear. I thought that was just some. That was just some silly. That was just some silly clue. Never mind then. Take back what I said. I take back what I said. Um, um, osito. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know why, but that's reminding me of the of the. If you guys remember that show, Special Agent Oso, because you know Oso is the bear. Okay, he named Osito. Finding solace in smuggled books and medication, he developed an incredible powers of concentration. When he was subjected to military experiments using a steroid codenamed Venom, his Iron Forge will help him survive when other test subjects had died. And he managed to escape. Determined to prove his worth, he sought out Batman and broke the Dark, the dark Knight's spine. But Batman recovered and managed to best Bane, cutting off the precious Venom supply that transforms Bane into a superhuman. Yeah. Since he was famous, infamously known for breaking the bat's back. <laughs> we all remember that. Okay, his real name is unknown. He's a professional criminal in Gotham City. He has brown eyes, when as he has brown eyes, but when on venom is green eyes. He has brown hair. He is five foot six regularly, but on venom he is six foot eight and he is hundred and forty pounds. Just, you know, when he's his regular self, but 350 pounds when on Venom. So basically, he is pure muscle. And his first appearance is Batman Vengeance of Bane, issue 1, in January 1993. And his attributes, a master strategist, intense focus, abnormally strong in reaction to Venom, giving him incredibly enhanced physical abilities, and determined to best Batman and all others who challenge him. Oh boy. Okay, and the last one of, okay, so I have Reja Ghoul. <laughs> oh, for some reason in the beginning, I used to pronounce it as Raja Ghoul, but it is Reja Ghoul. Little is known of the early years of the nearly immortal Reja Ghoul whose name means the demon's head. But it's known that he lived for many centuries due to the Lazarus Pit, mystical and alchemical <laughs> and alchemical uh, brews that restore his youth. <laughs> Yo, that's some wild shiz. A brilliant master of strategy and organization, Reja Gould's love and the goal is to save the earth from ecological devastation by destroying most of its population. Yeah, that's a bad sign. He recognizes Batman as both a worthy foe and a possible ally, except that Batman cannot escape his dystopian worldview. Batman also shares a love-hate relationship with Dracia's daughter, daughter, the beautiful Talia, who I say, that's an unhealthy relationship waiting to happen. On Talia's side, she would low-key be, I mean, you know, she would be manipulative, almost on the bordering of abusive. And I don't think Bruce deserves that abuse. That's why, that's why he gotta go to Catwoman, Selina. Okay, his real name is unknown. He is an international terrorist based in Mobile. In, with green eyes, gray hair, with the white streaks. Um, is 6 foot 3, weighs 210 pounds, and first appearance in Batman issue 232 in June 1971. And then his attributes, a genius intellect and strategist, uh, superior strength and stamina, uh, super hand-to-hand -hand combatant trained over millennia, nearly immortal thanks to his Lazarus pits, and commands a legion of followers dedicated to bringing his vision of an earthly paradise to fruition. Bruh. <laughs> okay.
Okay, next up we have Firefly. Ooh, this guy. <laughs> We got, yeah, Firefly. A pyromaniac, Garfield Lins has begun as a petty criminal, but soon graduated to major crime centering around arson, touching huge parts of Gotham in the process. But his fire soon raged out, out of his control, leaving him horribly scarred by one of his own blazes. His body is almost fully covered with burns, and he now wears a full-body flame retardant suit. When he's out pursuing his criminal interest between bouts and incarceration in Blackgate. Golly. This guy is like obsessed with fire. He don't care. He's the firefly after all. His real name is Garfield Lance. He's a professional criminal. Um, based in Gotham City. He has blue eyes, white hair with the black temples. Um is 5'11", 165 pounds, and first appearance in Detective Comics 100, uh, issue 184 in June 1952. And his attributes through, uh, through knowledge, thorough knowledge of flammable agents, extensive arsenal uh, <laughs> of fire-creating weapons, scarred over 90% 90, 90 of his body, and sociopaths with intense pyromania. God, so this guy is just, you know, he don't play around. Armadeus Arkham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you guys remember his spirit of Arkham. Since he was, this, since we had the spirit of Armadeus Arkham earlier. Okay, Armadeus Armadeus Arkham found the Elizabeth Arkham Asylum for the Criminally Insane, reading it, naming it after his mother, who he who he euthanized after uh, as treating as treatment for her dementia, built to get on the old grounds of his family's historic mansion on the outskirts of Gotham. Armadeus personally treated his its first patient, Martin Mad Dog Hawkins, who had killed Armadeus' wife and daughter. After administering fatal electro electroshock therapy treatments in to Hopkins, Amadeus lost all grip to it on sanity and was admitted to his own institution. And then he died. He died there, I know. <laughs> Amadeus Arkham and, uh, was a uh, psychiatrist. Jeez. <laughs> Um, Gotham City, based in Gotham City, his blue eyes, brown hair, 5'11", 175 pounds, his uh, first appearance in Batman, issue 258 in October 1974. Okay, and his attributes, highly respected psychiatrist, until his fall to insanity, heir to the Arkham land and fortune, and delusional schizophrenic. Wow. Okay, now we have Calendar Man. Ooh. <laughs> oh my god, this guy is wild. Okay, fixated on the calendar, Julian Day became the Calendar Man. A villain who timed and tied his crimes, the. Uh, Thematically, with two certain holidays throughout the year, only leaving clues by which he could, by which he could be caught. Gotham City hopes for a day, for a day off, are often clouded by the knowledge that any holiday of note is likely to be shadowed by Calendar Man's presence. Yeah. Okay, his name, his real name is Julian Day. is a professional criminal based in Gotham City. has blue eyes, brown hair, six foot three. Weighs 175 pounds and first appearance in Detective Comics, issue 259, in September of 1958. And his attributes, obsessed with quirks of the calendar and carefully plans and themes crimes around holidays. Jesus Christ, this guy does not play around. Okay, we got Black Mask.
okay, this is Roman Sionis, because I know, like, there are also, like, um, Jeremiah Arkham was also Black Mask, but I think this is the Roman Sionis one. I don't know why they do that. Okay. Following the suspicious death of his multi-millionaire parents in a fire, Roman Sionis inherited their fortune and then went on to bankrupt their company. Saved by a buyout by Bruce Wayne, Sionis came to resent and hate Wayne. Fixated on the, on the concept of mass, Sionis carved one of, from his father's black coffin and sought revenge. His ensuing battle with the Dark Knight caused his mask to be burnt into his skin, remaking him as the Black Mask. Sionis is now a feared gang leader and one of the most powerful mob bosses in Gotham with a burning hatred of Batman. Oh. Okay, his facts. He is a uh, Roman Sionis. is a professional criminal based in Gotham City. He has brown eyes, no hair, 6 foot 1, 195 pounds, and first appearance in Batman issue 386 in August 1985. And his attributes, obsessed with masks, Harbors a hatred of Batman and Bruce Wayne. Face resembles a black skull and feared and uh, powerful mob boss and a skilled marksman for his double, known for his double handgun. My God. <laughs> okay, next up we have the ventriloquist. Okay. Uh, Wesker was a timid orphan who deep repression erupted in a, in a baron ball bra. Baron bra. <laughs> try, try messing that up. <laughs> okay, um, resulting in him being sent to Blackgate Prison. There he encountered the puppet Scarface and promptly murdered the man who carved, who carved the puppet. The two are now inseparable, with Scarface directing a series of criminal activities well, most believe that Wesker, Wesker is simply acting off a second personality throughout the puppet. Wesker sees himself as a reluctant lackey who merely does his puppets fighting. Oh, oh, oh no. Okay, his real name is, Ar is Arnold Wesker. He's a professional criminal based in Gotham City. He has blue eyes, brown hair, 5'7", 142 pounds, and first appearance in Detective Comics of 5... Uh, Issue 583 in February of 1988. In his attributes, a delusional schizophrenic with multiple personality disorder, obsessed with his puppet Scarface, whom his puppeteers with unsettling skills. Whom, uh, when teamed with Scarface, the two operate as a criminal mastermind. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, now we got the Great White Shark. <laughs> A crooked financer who sold millions of dollars, Warren White. There you go, you hear that correct? You heard that correctly. Warren White thought he'd score a legal victory when his insanity plea went through. But when he got to Arkham, he realized his mistake. Driven insane by other inmates, he was also disfigured by an encounter with the with Mr. Freeze that left him without hair, a nose, ears, or lips. Oh, so he got into a brawl with Mr. Freeze? Jeez. What did he do? What in the world did he ever do to piss off Mr. Freeze? Come on. Oh, maybe he mentioned Mr. Freeze's wife because Mr. Freeze will literally want to kick the crap out of you should you sit, should you badmouth his wife. Or should you try to emotionally blackmail him. Yeah, because... <laughs> yeah, you really gotta piss someone off to do that. To do so, you you really gotta piss him off if he got to do that. Calling himself the Great White Shark, he filled his teeth into veins to more perfectly resemble his new namesake. Putting his financial skills to use, he has become a major player in Gotham's underground crime scene, running a number of of rackets from his cell in Arkham. Whoa. Okay, his real name is Warren White. He's a professional criminal based in Gotham City. He has brown eyes, no hair, 5'11", weighs 180 pounds, and first appearance in Arkham Asylum Living Hell in July 2003. And his attributes, brilliant financial skills, 
which he uses for a variety of criminal purposes, scarred visage that makes him resemble a shark, and teeth sharpened to points. Oof. And we don't have much left, uh... Okay, since we have... Okay, so next up we have Two-Face! Okay, District Attorney Darby Dent was one of Batman's strongest allies in Gotham City until a criminal until a criminal threw acid in Dent's face. Ouch. Yep. Hideously scarring him. Another ouch. The wounds fractured his psyche, and he was reborn as this uh as a psychoid criminal mastermind obsessed with duality. Oh, his former good luck charm, a two-headed trick silver dollar. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was losing my place because then I had to stop to text someone, but I'll probably edit the long pause out. Yeah, I'll probably edit that out. Sorry about that. Um, his former good luck charm, a two-headed trick silver dollar was damaged on one side in the attack, and Dent had seized it on as a reflection of his half-scarred visage. He flips it to decide the fate of his, of his victims. Despite Batman's efforts to reform his inner, his former ally, Dent is consumed by his fixation on chance, and his crimes are, and his crimes are designed to prove out his di, his diametric philosophy. Gamaga. Okay, so his name is Harvey Dent. He is a professional criminal in Gotham City. He has blue eyes, brown, gray hair. He is six foot tall and weighs 182 pounds. And first appearance in Detective Comics, issue 66 in August 1942. And his attributes uh, hideously scarred to the left side of his face, which he plays up with clothing that differently, that differently styles on one side. Extremely skilled with his weapons of choice, twin 45 automatics. And psychotic obsession with duality, designing crimes around the number two. Because, I think I made this joke earlier, but there, I guess he has a thing to where two is better than one. And then defers to his half-scarred coin in choices of life or death. Oh boy, and okay. All right, so now we got the penguin. Um, and I just I just realized I'm going to have to pause this soon before it goes over time. Okay, the penguin, one of Batman's oldest foes, is an, an eccentric criminal mastermind. Ooh. Known as much for his love of, of order anthology and trick umbrellas for his shady business dealings. Gotham's popular iceberg lounge serves as Cobblepot's front for the number of illegal financial activities that fund much of the city's underworld. Despite his short stature, uh, statue, the, um, the penguin is a willy foe whose umbrellas conceal a, a variety of deadly weapons and gadgets. Okay, his real name is Oswald Chesterfield Cobblepot. He is a restaurant, uh, restaurateur and a rocketeer. In Gotham City, he has blue eyes, brown hair, 5'2", 175 pounds. Hope he doesn't need himself to my 600 pound life. I'm going to make that joke. And, and first appearance in Detective Comics, issue 50, 58 in December 1941. Okay, and his attributes, a criminal and a financial mastermind, expert hand-to-hand -hand combatant, uh, driven by a need to prove himself in spite of his comical appearance, and employs various weapons, many based on umbrellas and birds. Because <laughs> he's a bird. He's a bird. He's, look at him. He's a bird. Okay, so now we got Harley Quinn. And I think we got a couple of her tapes, so we got to listen to them. So... Here we go, we 
have Harley Quinn, who I personally believe is more is a tragic character because a lot of her she she was manipulated by the Joker and he a lot of times he abuses her. Okay. An Arkham Asylum psychiatrist assigned to treat the Joker, Dr. Harleen Quinzel, instead became obsessively fixated on her patient, believing herself to be in love with him. She helped him escape confinement and took, uh, took on her own criminal identity as Harley Quinn. Quinn is a violent and unpredictable felon whose only motivation beyond general mayhem is achieving the Joker's approval. Because of his cruel and merciful... <laughs> And mercial nature, this is in some ways makes her just another of his victims, I'll bet to a very dangerous one. Yeah, which basically, in a nutshell, she is, you know, in an abusive relationship with him. He abuses her, he hurts her, and truthfully, like I said, she, uh, she's more of a tragic character. And... I mean, even I think in other, in other works, um, Ivy disapproved this relationship... If there are any other villains out there who disapprove this relationship, I don't know who who else. I was reading fan fictions, and of course, it seems like Doctor uh, the Scarecrow himself, Doctor Crane, does not like the relationship either. So, who knows? Okay, um, and also this is another example of one of those, you know, with where the staff. Uh, where the uh, doctors are assigned to patients is also pretty questionable. Like putting a doctor, uh, Dr. Quinn with the Joker, but had we not had that, we would not have Harley Quinn today. Okay, okay, I have Dr. Carl Harling Quinzel. She is a professional criminal who was formerly a psychologist, uh, psychiatrist. Okay, um, she's in Gotham City, has blue eyes, blonde hair, 5'7", 140 pounds. And first appearance in Batman Harley Quinn issue 1 on October 1999. And her attributes, surprising strength and stamina, superior gymnastic skills, total disregard for human life, and like the Joker, she's a homicidal psychotic who escapes easily, easy classification. Wow, and now we got her interviews, so we gotta listen to them. That's a good warning, and she's just trying to tell her, "Hey, be careful, because you because you're about to get into pretty tough spots, so pretty stuff, pretty tough stuff." Excuse me. Okay, here we go. Next tape. She seems so fixated on him. Okay, here's the la here is the last tape I found.
stuff happening. Okay, so now we have Killer Croc, who we found three of his tapes. And then after that, we have these last two, the last four characters to look at. That including Frank Bowles, who is a double-crossing douchebag, who probably might as well be almost as bad as Dr. Young. Um, Warden Sharp, who is, I think, you know, I can't trust, I can't completely trust him. The Joker, and then finally our protagonist, the Batman. So, we're going to look at Killer Croc. Okay, so now we get to hear Killer Croc's story. Born with a rare mutation that made his skin green and scaly and grew his body to grotesque proportions. Yep. Waylon Jones was raised by an alcoholic aunt, alcoholic aunt and bullied relentlessly for his appearances. For his appearance, excuse me. He briefly worked as a as a carnival as a carnival freak under the name Killer Croc, but as Miss um, Miss Amp uh, Miss Amp Tree, <laughs> sorry, can't talk today, grew as did his best as his bestial na nature, pushing him to a life of crime as his physical condition and mental state of deteriorate. Killer Croc became uh, becomes a more a more bit, uh, bestial foe, increasingly detached from humanity. Okay, his name is Waylon Jones. His um, occupation uh, occupation was an alligator wrestler, gangster, and a murderer. Um, and based on mobile, uh, has yellow eyes, no hair, uh, eleven feet. That's pretty tall. Um, five foot, five hundred and eighty five and eighty pounds. So basically, he's pure muscle. And first appearance in Batman issue three hundred and fifty seven in January nineteen eighty four. And then his attributes: Killer Croc is Killer, uh, excuse me. Killer Croc has incredibly thick, tough skin and razor sharp teeth and claws. See, I can't talk today. This is what happens. I spend so, like the whole episode just, you know, I I just you know talk so much rather you know talking a little bit when I'm just strolling around the game. Then again, this is what happens when I dedicate an interview, uh, not an interview, a um, an intermission episode. Okay. An expert wrestler and razor sharp teeth and claws. An expert wrestler, his strength and he and stamina are at a near superhuman level. Heightened senses and extremely fast reflexes. Able to survive in water for extended periods of time. An intense hatred of humanity. And now it's time to hear his interview tapes. get to play the last tape that I found. Careful, I'll do whatever you want, Doc. 
just because before I go over the freaking time limit on this thing. Um, so I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. So, and I'm continuing the last three of the, of uh, the characters, bios, and that stuff. And then after that, seems like that's just about everything else. Uh, that's just about everything that I, that, you know, I really have planned to do for this intermission episode. Okay, so I have Frank Bowles. <laughs> A.K.A. a double-crossing dude. He's a douche. Never liked him. And yo, that flask in the beginning of the game, man, he was messy. Come on. Okay, Frank has been working at Arkham for eight years. What? How was he in there for eight years? He has twice been suspended for drinking on the job and regularly holds poker evenings on the in the guards room. Frank is, des is desperate to be a top dog at Arkham. He fails to recognize that he is considered untrustworthy and generally disliked. Yeah, there are people who don't like him. Like, why is he? Why? What? Okay, his real name is Frank Bowles, an Arkham Asylum guard based in Gotham City. He has brown eyes, black hair, six feet, 185 pounds, and first appearance in Batman Arkham Asylum, summer 2009. And his attributes, arrogant belief that he is the best guard in the Arkham Asylum, uses sarcasm to cover up insecurities and failures, and violent temper has resulted in many injuries to patients. Why the frick is he a guard? Yo, okay, Warden Sharp. I look, you think he's a douche. Um, okay, Quincy Sharp. Here we go. Quincy Sharp has been running Arkham Asylum for the past three years and has dedicated his life to restoring the sanity, the, to restoring the sanity of the so-called supervillains that plague Gotham City. He is currently campaigning to become the next mayor of Gotham. To facilitate this campaign, he has instigated Stringit's new security and experimental research policies at Arkham. As real name is Quincy Sharp, a warden of Arkham Asylum. In Gotham City, he has blue eyes, gray hair, 5'8", and 190 pounds, and first appearance at Batman Arkham Asylum, summer 2009. And his attributes, intense dedication to, for, to cleaning up Arkham, pompous and old-fashioned in demeanor with a focus on his own political aspirations, and contempt for Arkham inmates and disinterest in the, speci uh, and the specifics of their treatment and masks in a, a cowardly, and ma uh, masks of a cowardly nature. Yeah, so why is he the ward? Okay, I swear, Gotham does not, I mean, Gotham probably does not do a very good job with, you know, hiring people to do things. Okay, next up, second to last, we have the Joker. Okay. An insanely homo homicidal supervillain, the Joker. Yeah, he is he is easily the most inf um, the most famous Batman villain. Um, the Joker's white skin, green hair, and blood red lips belly the chaotic nature underlying his cartoonish appearance. The self-styled clown prince of crime has no superpowers beyond the capacity for incredible violence and a skill at creating deadly mayhem. He is frequently co uh, coquettes uh, elaborate schemes to entrap his arch nemesis, uh, with his with his arch nemesis Batman. His real name is unknown. He's a professional criminal in Gotham City. Has green eyes, green hair, six feet, 160 pounds, and first appearance in Batman issue one in spring 1940. And his attributes: an unrepentant uh, homicidal maniac, albeit without a precise psychological diagnosis. Surprisingly strong hand-to-hand -hand combatant, his past is unknown. Conflicting, unconfirmed reports state that he was a failed co comedian, comedian, a petty theft, and a broken family man. Employs various deadly weapons, often based on party gag items. Frequently uses a toxin that stretches the victim's face 
into a Joker-like grin and causes death. And he has patient interviews, so we get to listen to them. I collected four out of five of them. Interview tape. Take page in interview 17. Joker remains uncooperative. My earlier diagnosis remains true. I believe he enjoys his persona too much. What's up, Doc? Today I thought we'd try something different. So you make me blush, Doc. I have a girlfriend. Dr. Quinzel, I know. In the paper. I saw what happened. What can I say? I'm a charmer. Anyway, I thought it would be good to talk about your child. the dirty secret. He knew the dirty details. Oh, boys. And now we finally have... We are ending this off with the Batman! Okay. <laughs> when his parents were gunned down in front of him, young Bruce Wayne... Ooh... Young Bruce Wayne resolved to rid Gotham City of the criminal elements that took their lives. He trained excessive, extensively to achieve mental and physical perfection. 
in addition to mastering martial arts, detective techniques, and criminal psychology. Dressing up as a bat to prey on criminals' fears, Batman fights crime with the aid of specialized gadgets and vehicles operating out of his secret bat cave below Wayne Manor. But then he's also got a bat cave under, you know, in Arkham, and you know, in Arkham Island. As he calls it, a home away from home. <laughs> okay, real name, Bruce Wayne is, is a CEO and a philanthropist. Uh, in Gotham City, has blue eyes, black hair, 6'2", 210 pounds, and first appearance in Detective Comics, issue 27 in May 1939. And his attributes trained to physical and mental peak, arsenal of gadgets, vehicles, and advanced technology, adventure detective, genius level intellect, an expert in, in most forms of martial arts, trained in all aspects of criminology, mastery of the physical sciences, computer expert, master of disguise, photographic memory, trained in stealth and espionage techniques, and expert escape artist. Oh boy. Okay, so that is all the characters. Um... That is basically all of the characters in this, in this, uh, whole thing. You know, you have everything, um, but anyway, so next episode, I will be heading back. I will be, you know, on my way to stop Poison Ivy from her stuff. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys! <laughs>